Hello there, good evening. My name's Dan and welcome to my allotment here in Essex in the southeast of the UK. So the nights are drawing in now and really can feel the autumnal nip in the air, if you will. So let me know what the weather's like where you are. I'm interested to know, particularly if you're in different regions, maybe in the northern part of the country, etc., etc., or indeed another country altogether. So anyway, you can see a pumpkin here. So this is variety Pacific Giant, and this is just one of the things I've got going on at this allotment. So what I'm gonna do is take you around. You can see what I'm harvesting now, and we can have a good discussion about it. So I've got this red sweet corn here. This is variety double red, and this is a variety of red sweet corn, which is said to be able to ripen in the UK climate. So we'll be interesting to see how this does. So we shall harvest some potatoes. Let's see what we've got here. And look at these. These are really good, actually. I grew an assortment of varieties of potatoes, quite a lot, actually. First early, second early's main crop, determinate, indeterminate. And uh, it's been a good year for potatoes. There was a lot of blight down uh, this allotment. There was a blight all over the country, I believe, with regards to potatoes because of the wet weather. Let me know down below whether you've got blight on your potatoes. Really have had a wet summer by UK standards. Even down here in the southeast where we tend to get some of the longest and driest summers by UK standards. But uh, watering certainly hasn't been as big of an issue this year as it was last year. So potatoes this year, quite interesting. I set them all in the no dig style and all very close or relatively close proximity, not what is generally recommended. I put them about six inches apart, which is about 10 centimeters, something like that. And because I set them so close together, not a lot of light was getting you know, into the, the ground around the area where the potato tubers were actually growing. And this probably will account for why very few of my potatoes have gone green because I didn't earth them up, which with regards to main crop potatoes is quite often recommended to do. But I've had main crop potatoes from this allotment, which I didn't earth up. And they were, that one's a little bit green there, but you can see all of these, they're actually not. So you can see my little potato haul here, which I'm very happy with. There really are a lot of potatoes here. When I've got more time, I'll probably end up taking them all up and storing them. So some varieties here. So I've got Rocket here. I've also got a variety here called Jazzy. Jazzy's a very nice potato. It's, a, it's an early potato and really nice tasting, nice for boiling. And I've also got Maris Piper here, which is a main crop potato. Nice for baking and uh, making chips and things like that. Down here, I have a variety of squash. This is a summer squash. This is a patty pan squash variety, Benning's Green Tint. And I really like these. They tend to come into cropping after marrows are you know, well on the way, really, or maybe even finished in some cases. But uh, so you can see there, and that's what they look like. They look like little flying saucers. You can let them get a bit bigger than this, maybe about that size. Don't let them get too big because they can get a bit tough. But uh, these are really nice. There's a real rich history attached to the patty pan squash. So have a look into these. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're a nice one to put on your list. So you want to make sure you're regularly checking your plants. So you can see there's plenty of little squashes on there, which is really nice. You could pick them that size, you know, like that. About two to four inches, something like that. A bit bigger, as I've shown you earlier on. But um, one good thing about patty pan squashes, this variety here, is they're more like marrow or courgette plants, meaning they're not spreading like many squash plants are. So you can actually grow these in a smaller space. So talking about squashes, this is Victor Winter Squash. It'll be a lot more orange than this when it's ready, but it's a really nice squash to grow. It's long keeping. It's a winter squash and they're, they're really good. They get quite big and they're quite ornamental to look at. So it ended up actually growing. <laughs> the plant ended up here in my sort of little cold frame stroke greenhouse DIY project here, but so that's just how it went. But um, these are a good one. I've grown them before, Victor Winter Squash. So in a month or so, maybe a bit less, it'll start to go an orangey color, a bit like a pumpkin. 
So I've got some pumpkin plants here, I've got two of them. And if I remember correctly, but don't quote me on this, I think this is variety Big Max, which I think I purchased the seeds from Lidl's or Lidl. So hopefully these will be ready, you know, late September, October time. So down to this part of the allotment, got quite a bit going on once again. Got plenty of runner beans here. I mean, look at those. They're grown really well. And actually these runner beans here, I set the plants in directly into six, seven month old horse manure, a mix of wood chips. And it seems to have yielded some uh, really lovely runner beans. Certainly a nice crop here nice and straight so uh, very happy actually uh, with how they turned out so you can see down here got an assortment of vegetables growing got some weeds there i weeded this the other day these weeds will be going straight on the compost bin i compost the majority of weeds my compost bins are a good size you want to try and make your compost bins at least a meter square just about 3.3 feet that way they'll heat up and hopefully kill the weed seeds in there so there we are now got Brussels sprouts here. These are variety Evesham special or Eversham special. I don't know how you say it exactly. And I've got some golden chard here. So these are frost hardy, which is going to be really handy because we could be getting frosts, you know, within the next few months. So start thinking about your food security. So we'll harvest some beetroot and this here is albino beetroot. Nice beetroot to grow, lots of history attached to it. I mean, look at that. And beetroot's certainly one of my favorite vegetables to grow. Nice tasting and incredibly nutritious. And it's nice to grow something, you know, a beetroot that's a little bit different. So I've got four here, you wanna keep an eye on your beetroot plants at this time of year, or indeed, you know, other times of year as well, because if these proceed to bolt, go to seed, then the root can go a little bit tough. I ate some the other day, and uh, they, they were from bolted plants, and they were quite tough and cheery. I mean, I can eat them, but uh, the majority of people wouldn't want to put themselves sort of, <laughs> sort of through that. So certainly uh, be vigilant. You don't want to lose your crops. So down here you can see some smaller vegetable plants. I've got some lettuce, I have some spinach, beetroot and some chard here. So these are going to be my winter vegetables. So I planted them out about a month or so ago, something like that. And they're being protected under this netting here so that the uh, pigeons do not devour them. But uh, I'm expecting good things for these. So the days are getting shorter now and come, you know, late October into November the days will be rather short indeed and plant growth will either cease or get very slow so you want to get them to a good size before then so that's what this is all about so if you've got any seedlings or mini plants like this that uh, you want to plant out you know don't delay I've got more back home in the polytunnel I need to get out I'm just waiting for the right time to do this but uh, want to get them out to make the most whilst the days are still reasonably long so that you can get them a good size before winter so you've got plenty of pickings to be eating throughout the winter months so really starting to lose the light now and uh, done some you know quite a lot of pickings so got some Cusa courgettes here variety Trista white here I've got some Market Moor 76 cucumbers, if I remember correctly. You saw the beetroot, and I've also picked some beans, so I'll show you those. So you can see the beans here, these are runner beans. Now, you may find these interesting, and these are a climbing French bean. These are variety Neckar Gold. Very interesting, when they get to this size, you can still eat them and they're not tough. So I'd recommend you grow those if you want a good size climbing French bean. And these are the Cherokee Trail of Tears climbing French beans, very historical, eaten by the Native Americans. So you may wish to look into those and you can just see the huge haul of beans that uh, I have here. So you may remember the pumpkin plant I shown you earlier, it's variety Pacific Giant, and it's growing in the horse manure mix of wood chips, which was about six to seven months old at the time of putting the plant out. And it's growing in a raised bed made of uh, straw bales. So that's very good. That's compost basically in the waiting as well. That's a carbon, the straw, a brown. So it's very useful in those regards. So the plant is a good size and there's about four 
pumpkins on here and I'm very impressed with this variety altogether to be honest. One pumpkin, two pumpkins, and this here is the big boy. So of course these pumpkins will go a more orangey colour than this and hopefully they'll make some nice uh, pumpkin soups etc. So uh, yeah, very very happy with how they are turning out. So this here is Uchiki Curie, otherwise known as onion squash. It's a very nice squash to grow and you can see the squashes don't get too big so you can grow them up a trellis, something like that. So take a look at those. So much of the produce that uh, you've seen me pick this evening is going to my friend Linda up in London who's a very good cook. So uh, Linda, I hope you enjoy what you're soon going to be receiving. So there we are, you've seen what I've harvested this evening. So all sorts of videos are going to be coming up when these potatoes are out and when there's also some more clearing been done here. Just got to find the time to do that, but uh, I'm sure I will. I'm going to be enriching the beds with some more manure, which you can see <laughs> under the pumpkin plant there. I'll probably end up getting some of this grass here. The majority of what's in this compost bin is grass and I'll be putting that down. Then I'll be putting a membrane over the top and then over the winter period, the worms will drag that in and enrich the soil. So hopefully this soil here, which already is pretty good, will proceed to be a total powerhouse of a growing area by next year. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But anyway, I hope you're enjoying your evening and if you like my work, please feel free to like it and you can also share it with anyone you think may be interested and if you'd like to be notified of any further videos I put up please feel free to subscribe and I shall see you in the next video.